Aquí podemos ver la imagen de la colecisto con la angiografía percutánea. Un caso interesante en relación a una enferma que tiene eh, un drenaje externo de la vesícula biliar y que no fue posible mediante cirugía hacer la resección de la vesícula biliar. Entonces el doctor Kenby Mueller le va a realizar un drenaje endoscópico. Ken, please. Thank you. Well, I'm uh, really excited about showing this case because we're in the organ preserving business. That's what we do as endoscopists. We, our goal is to preserve uh, organs and avoid surgery if possible. And the inspiration for me to develop Axios was to preserve an organ that I think we are increasingly appreciating better, which is the gallbladder. It's a very important organ. It has been historically considered a disposable organ, and you certainly can live without the gallbladder. But there's a lot of science now showing how important the gallbladder is for digestive health and for the body's health. So in that vein of preserving the gallbladder, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to try to preserve this patient's gallbladder. In this case, it could not be removed surgically. Unfortunately, and I do want to emphasize unfortunately, uh, and I'll explain why in just a moment, he had an external drain placed. It was done about a month ago. And when you place an external drain, of course, it's a fine, it's a nice temporizing measure, but it's going to make internal drainage done endoscopically much more difficult, complicated, and riskier. So we do uh, face some additional risks today. Now, when a patient is referred to me with a cholecystostomy tube in place, an external drain, I ask that the radiologist first see the patient, inject through the percutaneous drain and confirm that the entire drain is in the gallbladder and there is no leak coming out of the gallbladder. I also ask the radiologist to test and make sure that the gallbladder can be distended and safely distended. I also want to be sure that the gallbladder is not still inflamed because one of the biggest complications, the major complication that can result when we now infuse saline into the gallbladder to distend it so that we can place our axios is that the gallbladder wall could rupture or that what we're injecting, the saline, can start to leak out of the opening, the fistula that was uh, created. So things are definitely much more complicated in a previously cholecystostomized patient, and that's the case today. So this is going to be more challenging. All right, so now I just want to make one more comment before we start, because these, these foundation things are important, I think, and it's whether the patient needs to be intubated, and the patient is intubated, but in, in my practice, there are only two indications for intubating for gallbladder drainage, and the first is that the gallbladder is really massively distended, like a pseudocyst, and we're worried about aspiration. The second is if there's any downstream blockage, obstruction, then of course, there's a risk for the bile that's draining that it can be aspirated. So it's about aspiration risk. So normally there's not a high aspiration risk, so you do not need to intubate the patient. But it's fine that we've intubated and it's also for our course. All right, so now remember it's endoscopic ultrasound. And the most important as we go down, you have the endoscopic image, is that you evaluate the anatomy endoscopically. The antrum looks fine here. Make sure there's no ulcer, no erosions, nothing like that. We plan on placing the stent from in the bulb, right? A cholecystoduodenostomy, not a cholecystoantrostomy. But sometimes you have to place your stent in the antrum. So you should inspect the antrum. And now we're going to pop through the pylorus And once we're in the pylorus, in the bowl, sit here and look and make sure there's no ulcer here or any other pathology. And, of course, make sure that you see no obstruction downstream for any reason. And everything looks normal here. So now I'm going to pull back into the bulb. Everything looks fine. And I'm going to place the tip in the apex because this is where I ideally want to do my, uh, my axios placement. 
So let's switch to the EUS image large and we'll have the endo image small. All right, so now we immediately look here and see what structures we can see. Let's enlarge a little bit and uh, mag up a couple. So already here you can see a structure up here. That's the uh, bile duct. And you can see the cystic duct coming off of the bile duct there. See it coming off right like that. And we can use this to follow it to the gallbladder in just a moment. Now below we have the portal vein. It's important to evaluate the bile duct in this entirety because we want to know if there's a stone in the bile duct. Now I will say, because one of the questions that came, I was asked is, when do you place a transpapillary gallbladder uh, stent or tube? And my answer is, if, I'm, if I need to do ERCB, if there's a stone, well then at the same session I can place a transcystic gallbladder stent. But otherwise, I always prefer internal transmural drainage. So I'm following the bile duct. You can see how I can follow it right down to the ampulla about here. So it looks really, really fine. There's the confluence. You see the confluence. The splenic vein is down below. It comes off. The, the portal vein is up at the top. All right, now I'm going to see if I can follow the cystic duct there, the takeoff. And I'm using this to rotate my scope. It's usually a counterclockwise rotation to visualize the gallbladder. And it should be coming right about up at the top there. And it's compressed, you see. And you'll see that there was a bunch of little there's stones or shadowing. You see the shadowing, right? So I'm having to turn counterclockwise like this to get into a position to visualize the gallbladder. You see the stones, and I need to find a stable position to do the drainage. Now, I felt that I just slipped back a little bit, so I'm just going to take my time. This is maybe a good spot here, right? It's right in the middle, gallbladder's right in the middle, and if you look down at the endoscopic view, I'm making sure that I'm not too close to the pylorus. That's the only thing you need to watch out for. Don't place the stent too close to the pylorus, because then you may block off the pylorus, and then the food is just going to go directly into the axial stent. So you want to make sure you're more towards the apex. So if you look on the endoscopic now, I'm going to push more towards the apex and see if I can still find a good window. All right, so that's the window, and now's where we're going to start infusing saline into the gallbladder, but we're going to do it slowly. If you infuse very fast, you could rupture the gallbladder. So it needs to be slow. Now, Sergio is here. And Sergio, I don't know if you can show him, but he is now uh, injecting saline into the gallbladder. And we want to see the gallbladder. Remember how we saw how the small and when we did the GE gastroenterostomy? So we were using the oral enteric catheter to infuse and fill. We're doing the same thing now. And by the way, if the patient has a contracted gallbladder and no cholecystostomy tube, then you can use an F&A needle puncture, and then you can attach the pump to that, and you can also fill the gallbladder. So he is infusing water. And let's see if the gallbladder starts to distend. And that's our hope. I would tell you if the gallbladder does not distend, I'm not doing anything. So the gallbladder has to sufficiently distend. And you see inside of the gallbladder something that looks like a double tram. That is the cholecystostomy tube inside the gallbladder. So when we go inside, we also don't want to hit up against that. And we need to make sure that we have a space. So keep injecting. and You can be a little bit more aggressive now. You need to have an anechoic space. So that anechoic area is what you're going to target. You don't want to target where the stone is or stones, because those stones will absorb the heat. And so your electrocautery delivery system is not going to go through well. It's the, the stones are going to absorb all of that heat. So you need to stay clear of the stones. So this takes some patience, because if I cannot fill this gallbladder up, it's a no-go. So right now, it's still insufficient, and if I freeze, and I measure this, you're going to see it's, um, 
it's still very, very small. Right, so this is only 18 millimeters. And then uh, if we go, oh, sorry, not the cursor uh, calibers. And if we go the other way, right, it's just close to the wall. I mean, this is definitely in terms of a 10 millimeter saddle, no problem. But what we're looking at is the what I call the runway, right? We talked about that earlier, the runway. The runway, this is the trajectory of your needle or your, your uh, the, the delivery system, right? And this is only 15. This is not going to be long enough as a runway to deploy the distal flange. So if we use a 10, then you need to have a runway of about 20. If you use a 15, then you need a runway of about 30. If you use a 20, you need a runway of 38. All right, so these are the, the ballpark numbers. So right now for a 10, I'm still short five millimeters. So I need to wait till I get a runway in there that is long enough in the trajectory of the puncture path. So it's the longitudinal axis, right? So there's the, the cross section. That's where you're looking at the flange to make sure that there are no vessels where the flange deploys. That's the cross section. That's going across, uh, here's the cursor, here here so this is the cross section right so that's looking just that's where your flange is going to deploy and you want to make sure there are no vessels here if you're going to use doppler but this here is a longitudinal axis right and this is the most important you want to make sure you've got enough runway and sergio are you still injecting oh no i'm sorry Sergio. you got to keep injecting because if you got to Sergio is going to determine whether we can do this or not. Okay, it's all on you, Sergio. I'll submit there, right? You, you, we, I want you getting a hand cramp doing this. Now, you could uh, put the pump, uh, attach the pump to this too. You just have to be careful because the pump will infuse very, very quickly. We're getting there. Look, Sergio, keep it going. Sergio was, uh, it was thought that he had to wait for my commando. So now he knows. You keep injecting till we have, and let's go ahead and get the 10 ready. Okay. So I think we're, okay. we can do this. It's going to work. Sergio is working hard. And I'm going to start by, we're going to, this is hydrophilic coated, so it slides very easily. And why is that important? Because you never want to push against resistance. It's very important. If you push against resistant, resistance, you can partially deploy the, um, the axios. So the axios, the nose cone, I should say, must always be flush up against the end of the sheath. That's so critical. You can never let there, you, you can never allow a gap to form. All right, so now we're going to, this is a swivel lower lock, which allows me to swivel like this so that you can see the uh, markings here, lock and unlock and the numbers in case you get flustered and, and, and you forget. And we're not going to energize just yet. I'm going to wait till I'm just ready to go. And we're going to check our settings. So I had already asked for auto cut, effect five, and 100 watts. Yeah. All right, so we're good on our settings. We've gone through our checklist. And now go ahead. We're going to make it hot. We've, we're, going to, we've, we're going to energize now. I'm going to advance forward. And I just want to see if I can easily advance this forward. There it is. And this is where I'm going to ask one of the assistants to come here and hold my scope. So Miguel is going to be that assistant. Sure. Now, Sergio, you're injecting. Are you getting a hand cramp yet? No? Keep injecting. All right. So now I just kind of kind of push like this a little bit. But this is looking pretty good. Can I have the pedals uh, to yeah. my feet, please? Pedal, pedal. There's no foot pedals. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Within the so yellow pedal, remember S S S, slow, steady, smooth. You're not doing an F and A of the gallbladder. You're doing a electrocautery enhanced puncture, and the word enhance means those micro wires are what allow you to get that cutting effect. All right, so now we've got the foot pedal and ready to go now. Okay. Miguel, you hold this again. Sure. All right. So we just make sure we're able to tent up against the mucosa, right? That you're not going to skive off. And yeah, then we just hold this. 
and just slow and then wait for it to bubble. Now remember the wall may be a little bit thick, so I have to just go, now I just popped in and you saw the bubble. And if you torque a little bit, you should be able to see. But I'm just gonna push this slowly forward like this, up against the opposite wall, disconnect right now immediately the cautery so I don't accidentally burn across the opposite wall. So now I'm actually not going to lock the black hub because I need a little bit more maneuverability. Oh, sorry. On this. Okay, and make the like this. Actually, I will lock the uh, lock here just so that I don't accidentally move anything. Taking off the yellow safety, right? Now I'm deploying the distal flange very slowly, very slowly. And I can always advance a little further in. So this is the incremental maneuver. Push this in a little bit more like this. All right, let's get it to come and open up fully. Okay, just now what you see is there is some fluid that leaked out there, right? So I have to now act quickly. I have to snug, I'm using this like a retractor. Now here's where you have to be a little faster. I've got to pull up against the wall before we get too much fluid in between. Got to snug up as best I can without pulling that axios out. I've got to deploy in the working channel and just hope that that the distal flange does not pull through while I'm doing this. All right, now it's through, okay? It's now let's switch to the endoscopic view and I'm gonna push out the proximal flange. But you saw that ascites was coming in my way and that's why I had to go a little bit faster now. All right, so here we are and what I'm hoping, what we're gonna see is saline. You're not gonna see bile, right? We put saline in there. Sergio was working so hard for us. And now I'm just sitting here and don't do anything. Don't do anything fast. Don't go pulling anything out. You got to sit here and wait till you see adequately because you're at a, sh at, a, at a tangential angle to the axis of the saddle. So if you pull out now, you could pull out the axios. So I'm just going to sit here, push in slowly, wait and see what the orientation of the axios is. So you see it here, right? Okay, now is where I can very slowly pull this back. It's not ideal, but I'm just making sure I'm not pulling against resistance. Make sure it comes very smoothly. And there's the nose cone, right? The micro wires. All right, now we can pull this out. Good. Now we can look and we can see the position of the Axios, right? And now you can see some bile in there, so it's flowing nicely. So we accomplished the mission but I would now say the patient definitely needs some antibiotics because we saw that there was no way I don't give antibiotics. But here we do have to, we saw the, the, the fluid. And you know, it's, it, that wasn't ascites because he didn't have any ascites before. That was the fluid that was seeping out and that's from the hole from the cholecystostomy. All right, so now we're done. I mean, we've got it, it's in there. And the other thing is just look at the pylorus and just make sure that this thing is not blocking. And it's in there, you know, it's still kind of close to it, but there's enough room for food to pass through. And this is going as it expands on its own. Now, the question also might be, well, should you go in, should we? Uh, we could go in with a 10 millimeter CRE balloon, eight to 10. This is a 10 millimeter Axios. And we could go in with a pediatric gastroscope and we could do EHO. Okay. We could do that. Is that because she has uh, stunts? Like, you want to do that? Yeah. No, no. We're, we're in the next Well, no, 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 it's a she, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And one did. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, right. Okay. So, uh, you know, no, no. Normally, I try to talk to these patients before I start. To, you know, so they they know me, and there's a the doctor from outside coming. But but she was already intubated when I walked yeah. in. Okay. So, any questions I can answer?
Because I'm done. That is no question. We are going to change the wrong. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kenny.